I thought it was big news when President Trump announced yesterday that uh, he is sending Treasury Secretary uh, Steven Mnuchin to China. I thought that was a big deal. He's going to talk trade. Mark Short is with us, White House Legislative Affairs Director. Uh, Mark, is, is the Treasury Secretary going over there to negotiate a deal? The Treasury Secretary is going. He's going along with Ambassador Lighthizer, uh, our United States Trade Representative, as well as Larry Kudlow, who heads our National Economic Council, to have further conversations. I think, as you've seen, China has, uh, has opened trade to American automobiles, which we're pleased with, and uh, we hope that we can continue to make more progress with China. Um, I thought it was a big deal, but the market didn't react at all. Is this just one I know, a high level guy going there, but is this just one in a series of meetings that will be stretched out over coming months? Because I think investors want to end the whole idea of a trade war with China. Well, Stuart, I don't, again, I don't think we're, we're looking for a trade war. I think, as uh, the president has said, though, China stealing intellectual property from American companies has gone on for way too long, and you finally have a president standing up to it. And we're hopeful that, uh, that uh, Secretary Mnuchin, Ambassador Lighthizer, and Larry Kudlow will make progress in their conversations. Um, the latest poll from Gallup, it yeah. shows only 39% of respondents approve of the tax deal, 52%, a clear majority, disapprove of it. Yeah. Um, you know, why are you not getting the, the message out there? I mean, it seems Stuart, like the message yeah. is falling flat. Well, Stuart, let's a couple things in mind. One is that poll, ironically, was conducted the week before tax day. So as Americans were preparing their tax returns, of course, if you're asked, you're not going to be happy with it because it's still 2017 taxes you're paying. The new tax code comes into effect next year. So that's a big factor in when that poll came out. Secondly, let's keep in mind that since the tax plan was announced, 5 million Americans have either received a bonus or a wage increase, unemployment rate lowest point in 17 years, unemployment benefits lowest point in 44 years, and 1.9 million Americans have, have come off of food stamps and back to work so, since the president was inaugurated. So the economy is moving in the right direction. I would dis dismiss that Gallup poll because I think it came out at exactly the wrong time. I think you're fighting the media. I think that Nancy Pelosi's message, which, uh, which basically says, you're just giving them crumbs, the rich get everything, I think that's the message which is penetrating, that's the message which the media is putting out, and, you know, they're winning. At this point, you've got to say, Mark, they're winning. Uh, Stuart, I, I think that there have been multiple polls that have come out that have shown that the tax plan is becoming more and more popular. The Gallup is the outlier, came out the very week of tax day. If, if Nancy Pelosi wants to make the case that all Americans are getting is crumbs, when the average American working family of four is receiving more than a $2,000 uh, benefit because of this tax plan, we are happy to engage in that argument. Okay. Iran, as I understand it, does not allow anyone to ex inspect its military yeah. sites in the aftermath of the Iran nuke deal. There is some suggestion that we're going to make sure the Iranians open up those military sites yeah. to inspection. If they did that... Would that be enough to keep President Trump and keep America in the Iran nuke deal? Not that alone, Stuart. But keep in mind what you just said is very important. Very few people talk about it. And said they, they continue to put out talking points that Iran is in compliance. And yet, as Director Pompeo, the CIA, and the president have said, it's hard to know if they're in compliance. They're not allowed to inspect the sites. But additionally, Iran continues to take the $1.7 billion in cash that was sent to the mullahs in Iran, and they're, and they're basically using it to continue to foment terrorism across the Middle East, attack our allies, kill innocent people. So, no, it is broader than that. It needs to be Iran really pulling back on its, on its, on its terrorism efforts. It also has to be uh, no longer a sunset on the on the provision of Iran uh, stopping its nuclear program. So there are several components. The president is willing to continue to talk about that. He's, as you know, he's talked to the, the French president about it. And uh, if Europe can apply more pressure, then he's willing to look at that before the May 12th deadline. But simply uh, allowing the inspections is an important step, but not sufficient. Uh, Mike Pompeo's nomination uh, for the uh, Secretary of State job goes to the full Senate shortly. And yeah. it's likely to be confirmed. I understand that. What happened in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee? What was all that drama about? Well, Stuart, I think it's, it's really become a sad state of affairs here in Washington when you have members of Congress who will tell you in private that the director is a great pick. He's done a phenomenal job at the CIA. He's got great credentials, graduating top of his class at West Point, uh, magna cum laude from Harvard Law School. But I can't vote for him.
And the reason is that they're simply become so politicized and so polarized in this town that they're not making votes based upon somebody's credentials or who is best qualified. It's what appeals most to your base. And when you begin doing that on issues like national security, it's, it's really becoming a dangerous situation. So uh, on, sadly, that is, that is the dynamic we face here in Washington, is the Democrats are very energized to oppose any Trump nominee. Director Pompeo is terrifically qualified. He got through on an entirely partisan vote. We expect it will be largely a partisan vote on the floor tomorrow, too. Mark Short, we always appreciate you being on the show, especially today. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. sir. Thanks for having me. See you later. Thank you.